Hey guys, today I'm pretty excited to bring you the 2023 Subaru BRZ. Why is this vehicle important? Because it's part of a dying breed. Rural drive coupes don't sell in the numbers they used to. And if you add the fact that you can still get this one with the manual transmission for under $30,000, then the BRZ becomes some sort of a blue unicorn. Are you guys ready? Let's go. First of all, I want to thank those of you that have allowed me to test drive your car on my channel. It helps me a lot. If you live in the San Diego area and would like to have your car featured on my channel, please send me an email to the link in the description box. Thank you. Thank you again. I probably chose the hottest day of the year to shoot this video. The current generation Subaru BRZ was introduced in 2022 and it's unchanged for 2023. No surprise. It is very closely related to the Toyota uh, GR86. They're nearly identical. Maybe a case of batch engineering, but in this case, each car expresses its own aesthetic language and its own unique suspension tuning. I spare the Subaru uh, BRZ a break because nowadays it would be nearly impossible for a car manufacturer to throw money into a coupe because they just don't sell as much. Um, this car wouldn't exist if it wasn't uh, thanks to the joint venture between Toyota and Subaru. This BRZ is the premium version which is actually the base model in the BRZ. The only option that you can get with this car is the automatic transmission which is this one. Some of the standard features of this car include the 17 inch wheels, which I think look pretty nice. The limited slip differential, which is uh, stock in all models, LED headlights, dual zone climate control, an eight inch uh, touchscreen, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard on all versions of this car. A leather wrapped steering wheel, a keyless a proximity entry. This key fob is pretty cool with the push start uh, feature that I really like. And because this is optioned with the auto tragic transmission it comes with features like adaptive cruise control automatic emergency braking and uh, some sort of like lane it's not lane keeping but it's, it warns you when you get in another lane and paddle shifters subaru claims that the transmission is red matching but we'll see about it during the test drive i drove it earlier and it drives pretty pretty nice i was actually impressed and to top it off as I said earlier, all Subaru VRCs come with a standard limited slip differential, which is huge for this segment. For this later generation, uh, the engine was upgraded from a 2.0 to a 2.4 flat four cylinder engine. And because the cylinder layout it's, has a particular sound that a lot of people think, but I actually like it. How about we take a listen to it? I love it. It's nice to find a four cylinder that is not force inducted. To me, it adds to the perception that this vehicle will last a long time. And of course, the smooth power delivery, even if it means uh, losing a little bit of torque. This one is rated at 228 horsepower and 184 pounds feet of torque with a red line of 7,500 RPM, which sounds like fun. That's an upgrade compared to the 2.0 engine, the, the prior generation, which was rated at uh, 200 horsepower and 151 pounds feet of torque. In the automatic version, the MPG of this car is estimated at 21 in the city and 30 in the highway and premium gas is required. The suspension has struts up front and independent double wishbone suspension in the back. Interior. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the interior, but know that in my opinion it's very well optioned, especially considering the price point. They did a great job at keeping this car under $30,000. This one being the lower version comes with cool features like a digital instrument cluster that you can customize to your liking with three modes, uh, normal, sport and track. And it also comes stock with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I mentioned earlier, as well as dual climate control. For other nice features you're going to have to upgrade to the limited trim, the BRC Limited is about $1,500 more and it comes with bigger wheels, 18 inch wheels uh, that come with uh, summer tires, summer performance tires, adaptive LED headlights that move around, they swivel when you turn the steering wheel and fake suede and leather seating with heated seats up front. Uh, it also has a nicer audio system and a remote engine start among other safety and convenience features. I like the simplicity of this interior. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the Porsche Cayman, but obviously with different materials and stuff. You can see the cost cutting measures here and there, but 
Other than that, this car was properly optioned for this segment of the market. About the exterior, the hood line is very, very low. You can thank the lower seating flat four engine for it. It reminds me of the old original RX-7. This allows the BRZ to be fitted with smaller than average wheels. The stocks are 17 and the only upgrade is an 18 inch wheel. This engine placement also allows for the car to have a very low waistline, providing most drivers with good visibility. It has functional vents in a world where cars over abuse the use of fake vents in order to make a car appear more sporty. The BRZ is actually sporty without trying too hard. I think that the lines of the vehicles are actually pretty conservative. They're simple lines. Also, the front grille is on the smaller side for today's standards and it sits lower than the one found on the twin, the Toyota GR86. Down below, you have this contrasting lip spoiler that in my opinion looks great and adds to the sporty look of the BRZ. The rear end is pretty clean. All BRZs, regardless of trim level, come with an integrated rear spoiler. The taillights are pretty simple and at the bottom you will find this black cladding that looks great in my opinion and these dual exhaust tips that complement the sporty nature of the BRZ. One thing worth mentioning is that the trunk of this car is on the smaller side as suspected, but I wonder if they should have gone with a hatchback and disguise it in a way that the Mazda 6 used to do it back in the 2000s. Remember that nice Mazda 6 that looked like a sedan, but it was actually a hatchback. That would have been good in this car. In the case of the BRZ, the rear seats fold down completely, allowing you to have the extra cargo capacity that you need. And according to what I've seen, you can actually fit an extra set of wheels and tires back here for those of you that plan to take this car to the track. So far, so good. So now let's go drive it. I've been eyeballing this car for a very long time, back when it was a Scion FRS, Subaru BRZ, what is it, 2013 when it was introduced, the first generation, and for some reason or another, I never got one, I always thought about getting a new one, then I thought about getting a used one, and I just never did. So when this opportunity to test drive this one presented itself, I just couldn't pass it, even though it's the automatic. I would have preferred if this car was the manual transmission, and I actually do recommend that if you wanna get this car and wanna get the full experience of this car, to get it with the manual transmission, but this automatic transmission is not bad at all. It's a six-speed transmission, and to me, it's very responsive. Some experts ding it for being a little bit laggy, but I mean, not to confuse this transmission with an SMG, but it works really, really well, especially when you put it in manual mode and go through the gears with the paddle shifters. It's plenty of fun. And then once you go to the sport mode with the track mode, Let's turn the traction control off and it holds the revs higher. I mean, that engine sound that you hear is fake and is fed to you through the speaker system. And there's a way to disable it, but I'm not going to mess with it. It's actually pretty easy to do, but I'm not going to mess with it because it's, it's not my car. For those of you that are taller, you get these indentations on the roof that allow you to have helmets on if you were to track this car. And as I said, when I was talking about the interior of this car, I'm not gonna ding it for materials and all that stuff because I just don't think that anybody would expect this car to be a luxury car with the luxury interior. Uh, it has plenty of road noise when you get on the highway, but again, you want this to be heavier or you want this to be quicker. Um, so once you start demanding too many things from a car, then you end up with an SUV. Yeah, you want more space, you want more practicality, you end up with a bigger vehicle, heavier vehicle, uh, basically a crossover or an SUV. This is just an old school coupe with a rear wheel drive and LSD and possibly a manual transmission, not in this case. And then you have plenty of manual controls in here, even down to a manual emergency brake which is pretty cool for those of you that like to use it to drift and all that stuff i'm loving this car this this could actually be my next car um you notice that it's a bumpy drive yes but it's a lot more livable than for example the one the drive on the 350z that is very punishing this is not and the seats they hold you in place they're bolstered right here pretty heavy bolster on the side so you hold me in place if you were to get the, what is it, the Limited, it's called the Limited, then you get the fake suede and leather with this. Um, I just wouldn't pay because I like to keep it basic. And it handles pretty good.
plenty of road noise, not wind noise, just road noise. And I don't have a problem with it because I was not expecting anything different from this car. The in and out of this car is it's a short because this car is fairly, fairly low. But then again, as you get older, everything becomes a short. And I acknowledge that this car is maybe for somebody about two decades younger than me. So I may be a little bit out of place with this car, but some of us just enjoy driving cool cars regardless of age, right? So that's my case. And the reason why I say that this could be my next car is because my BMW is getting a little bit old and it needs a lot of maintenance. And sometimes I hate to put my wife in the trolley when I have to take her Tesla. So something like this is fairly affordable. I wanna keep this video short, so I wanna leave it at that. I'm having a lot of fun driving this car and it's about time to go return it to the proud owner of this 2023 Subaru BRZ. Now let's go to the final thoughts. This has been my presentation of the 2023 Subaru BRZ. It's a great car. The owner likes it so much that he actually has two of them, the other one being a manual transmission, which he tracks. This vehicle comes with LSD, rear wheel drive, a manual transmission for under $30,000. Where do I sign? And we actually considered that this car was developed by Two companies that make some of the most reliable vehicles in the world it makes it a great candidate for my next car thank you for watching and i'll see you next time